<clears throat> Hello there, and welcome to the commentary for Attack of the Living Toys, the motion picture by the one guy that made it. Um, basically, I just thought I'd do one of these since, as usual, it's a little hard to understand, like many of my other videos, so I thought I could explain kind of what's going on, watch along, as well as add some interesting little facts or whatever. This scene, I don't even like how it turned out. The lighting's all screwed up, but this was actually one of the last things I thought up because the kitchen scene was originally supposed to be the first scene, but the script was, I, I rewrote it like halfway through and I quickly filmed that first scene to kind of get more of an idea of what I do, Lego customizing. Just kind of make that clear, hopefully. Um, Hopefully you can read these notes. I tried to read them. I tried to uh, write them as clear as possible, but the way I filmed them, it might be a little difficult. Obviously not in that shot, but like right here. Hopefully you can read that. I hopefully I put it on screen long enough. This one you can read. I understand that one. Um, yeah, but this is a pretty simple scene. I probably should have put like a, something in the background, like some sort of noise, because it's kind of just silent for the most part. There's not much going on. I could at least like talk to myself. As I was putting together the film, I was thinking about doing a voiceover because I only talked twice in the entire movie. I like that. Um, yeah, I, but I really don't like... I couldn't think of a good way to include voiceover that I didn't feel forced and I also didn't know what I'd say this is something with all my videos actually I just can't think of anything that I'd say to make it not seem forced so I'm silent for the most part it's about myself but this song is royalty free <laughs> it's probably the one song one recognizable song in this whole movie unless you know like a lot of piano music. You might recognize one later, but I like this scene. I think this is one of the first scenes that I filmed. Uh, finding the alien, running out in the woods, finding it, and running back. Those, like, four shots, I think. Those were the first things that I filmed, but I think this was, like, second, this whole scene. I filmed this completely out of order. Um, and that's a little... I probably wouldn't, if I had to do that again, I probably wouldn't include that shot. It's way too obvious what I'm trying to say, but I like this shot. Um, yeah. There's actually no phone in that case, um, because I'm filming with the one phone that I had at the time. I didn't think of using my other phone until halfway through filming, so in most of the shots with that, phone. It's really just my case that I took off to film. Um, but a few of the later shots, like in the last half of the movie, my phone's actually in the thing and you can see it. But uh, this is April May. I found her on Instagram. Um, she did a pretty good job. I mean, better than me, but yeah, she talks more than me. I really like how this scene, uh, this moment actually kind of cut together. This was actually the first thing that I filmed, but I don't really count it as like something, because it's just a loop. Um, it's supposed to be like a great inside of like a space ship. I hope you... Um, the one guy that I asked about the movie, the one guy that I talked to after watching the movie, he got that it was an alien. But I just want to clarify that that was supposed to take place on a spaceship and it exploded. Like a self-destructor or whatever because the alien like killed the rest of the crew that's what she was talking about and they exploded and rebel came down and landed in the woods and i found it and the alien happened to be on the like with the rubble that survived came down from the sky and that's how the alien was damaged in the side of the head from falling down from uh, space it sounds a lot it sounds really dumb when i say it like that but it made sense back when i wrote it like a year ago um, yeah, this is the real first thing that I filmed. Um, 
I have a lot of, you see those, that little uh, dot at the bottom? I have a... That kind of annoys me. It's because the light is right next to the... It's twenty directly at the camera. It's like... I, I don't remember what it's called. Lens flare, maybe? But it doesn't look like one. It's just a dot. I don't know much about that, but... There's no phone here. You can see it when I lower it. You can see through the camera hole through the to the shelf behind it. Um... Yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> There's no phone in there. <laughs> I like these uh, slow moments, because I, I tried to make this movie as long as possible. I tried to make it as much apart from my other videos as possible to make it seem more professional, or, I don't know, just more of a different thing, of an event. I, I put actual money into it, I don't know. I try to put in more slow moments because all my other videos are really fast paced and I try not to have it like that but the way I write things I don't leave it much time for like thought so I really appreciate like the I don't like the music here I really appreciate like the slow moments in this movie because those are the moments where I I feel the movie really shines or like that like the really slow zoom out yeah I don't really like the music here it doesn't really fit I don't know I just quickly had the Fine one. All the music in this movie is royalty free or copyright free. Oh, except for one, because I didn't do enough background of a background check on it. I tried so hard to make this movie its own thing and not have any copyright strikes, but one song, the last song I put into the movie because I couldn't find anyone else, and it said it was copyright free in the description. Man, just one of all the songs in this movie. I was so close. But. Yeah, I really don't like my acting here. Oh, God. I could have really smoothened out the stop motion here. I, I put in a lot less stop motion than I thought I would when I wrote the script. Um, oh, the lighting's so inconsistent. Oh. I like the quick zoom-ins, but I do those a lot in this movie. So it might be a little obnoxious. Um... I do a lot of like POV and zoom in shots in my videos, and I'm trying not to do that as much. But it, I just can't. I, the way I write things, I just can't think of any other type of shot to do. Um, oh, I don't like how I did. This. I don't like this whole scene. It's. I don't like it. Ugh. <laughs> it's really the music. The music. Music is, from what from my experience, music is the hardest part of making these videos because I try I was planning on making the music for this movie actually but I tried it and it was just so difficult that I just made the um, alien drum scare I use it a few times that's just an electric uh, electric guitar thing I don't remember what exactly it is but that's from GarageBand the app that's where I was gonna do all the other music but I tried like so hard and I couldn't get anything good so I decided I'd just get a royalty free and copyright free music and uh I think it turned out a lot better than it would have been if I used my own music because I don't have any musical taste <sighs> I'm getting off topic but ooh my shadows I, I, I didn't even notice that that's interesting um this is the uh, the basement this this whole portion where I'm in the basement is one of the better parts in my opinion because everything kind of slows down. The stop motion wasn't as crappy. I get to use my uh, sound effects skills with a Z, uh, I guess, more, especially in this shot because I'm just basically what my character is. Basically, the whole movie, my character is a uh, kind of a recluse. Like in the beginning, uh, I forgot to talk about it. Uh, I hope you heard the car pulling out when I was walking into the kitchen. I was supposed to be like my dad that left all the notes. And I'm kind of like, whatever. Like, I kind of just don't care. Like, I'm uh, a recluse. I kind of just sit around. And um, despite my age, I just continue to uh, customize Lego without any consideration for uh, where my life is going growing up and stuff. With, like, the driver's manual. That's what I was trying to communicate through the movie. I have to over the course of this movie come to um in a way the 
let go of my childhood by destroying all of the customized Lego minifigures that I've made in a way to just let go of that and like welcome the future and in the end I read the driver's manual because I'm open to the future now that everything I spent all my time on is gone now and I can realize that and move on with my life. That's supposed to be what I'm doing. I like develop as a character through these wild situations. Um, that's, that's what I was going for. This piano song, this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, the, I, I was just looking for a piano, I don't remember how I stumbled across this, but there's, I, I think it's a, I don't know, I feel like it might be a popular one, but I don't, I don't know much about, I actually don't, have, <laughs> I don't know much about music. That stuff, um, the, the line, the circle, and the triangle, I engraved that on the side of the alien skull, but it got covered by paint in my, there's no way you could have seen it. That was supposed to be like a, the alien's name, like a branding. Like it, it gets engraved into their horns or the skull. Um, and I, di I didn't think about it when I included that in the scenes, like drawing on the walls and stuff. Like, oh, I hope you get that the alien is uh, controlling the, to uh, the toys, by the way. Yeah, the alien has telepathy. I was going to put in an Aquaman noise. <laughs> Uh, to make it a little more obvious, um, but I couldn't find any Aquaman noises without music in the background. But I, I really hope you got that. That shot of me uh, falling over in the chair, I, that's the one shot I reshot like after, like uh, like a month after I filmed the basement scene. That's the last shot I filmed because I don't know what it was, but it was something in the background was screw it up or... No, I had my sweatshirt unzipped. That was the one shot of the entire basement where my sweatshirt was unzipped. And you could see my shirt was different. So I had to reshoot that, but... I don't like how I cut the music there. I could have found another one. Um... I don't like my acting here. The shadow looks cool, I guess. The way I framed that. Maybe it was accident, I don't remember. But that looks pretty good. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. This is supposed to be the moment where I, like, shed the stereotypical basket case attire with the hat and the sweatshirt. Um, I really hated that sweatshirt. I filmed a lot of the stuff with the giant baggy thick sweatshirt during the summer where we had giant heat waves and stuff. It was not very good planning. I hate that sweatshirt. It's a nightmare to film with. <laughs> This was the whole peanut thing, falling over the chair, that's completely improvised. I wrote a different outcome to the scene, I don't remember how it went because that was a while ago, but I rewrote the scene to use the peanuts because, I don't know, I just thought of it. Um, and I think it, I think it was a lot, from my memory, it was a lot better than what I had originally written. This is like the uh, third, second or third things I, thing that I filmed. I filmed all the outside stuff first. There goes that guitar thing again. That's the one thing I kept from GarageBand. Um, I hope you could see the fake blood there dripping down. It's supposed to be like the alien's damage and it's getting all the toys to come grab it to come finish me off because it could sense that I destroyed one of the toys that like I um because this whole thing wouldn't really work if I wasn't so connected to the toys so where I was too scared to destroy them. But in that basement scene, I realized that um, I like I I changed as a character and I learned to destroy them. And in this scene, I learned that I can actually damage the alien because blood is shown with the toy. And I'm like, oh, should I leave and let the alien and the toys spread and affect like my neighbors and the town and stuff, or should I stay and possibly kill the alien, or at least I don't know, fight back with the toys. <laughs> yeah, I try to make it as clear as possible. I, I either don't make things clear at all, or I make them way too obvious, I find. Um, I was originally going to have a shot through the window to make it look cooler, but it was cold outside, so I decided not to. It was cold in that garage, my. Ooh, and I was wearing a t-shirt, too. Yeah. Um... 
the music is uh this 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 piece of music was in the trailer and i really wanted to use it in the movie because i really like it and it's one of the few pieces of music that i used in the movie that i like actually really like um but it's it's too quiet for the scene i should have found an, i should have looked for another thing it's way too quiet especially compared to the other music that i put in i don't like that edit uh that's so low quality because I reversed that if it wasn't obvious enough. Uh, the one app that didn't put like a watermark or anything on it that I could reverse videos in, it dropped the quality so much. I'm lucky I got that, the microphone clips there because that was like the big stunt. That was one of the big stunts that I did uh, after this one. This is like the, that's reverse too. That doesn't look as bad, but yeah, the quality drops. Um, a ton. I should have made this more fast paced. I don't like how slow it is. Especially the music. Um, I, uh, in this scene, I was supposed to have toys appear inside the blanket with me, and I did have them in there, but you can just see, like, the. You, you can't see anything. I just put in the sounds because, like I said, the lighting wasn't good enough. I actually broke off the tongue of that. When I hit it, I showed them Instagram post. Oh wait, no, I didn't, because I forgot to take a picture. But yeah, I broke that one for real. I broke a few things, a few of my customs for real, but most of them remain undamaged. They can take a few hits. Um, I like that shot. I like that. I like that edit. I edited it perfectly, so it felt like I actually got hit. I, I really like how that turned out. I like this shot too. That was like the first try too, and I timed it perfectly. Um, I wanted to get creative with the lights since I had those lights in my closet that could flicker. Um, I do this shot where I rise up like three times. It's I, I just didn't think it through, and again in my script I didn't write it. Like I wrote it with that shot in mind, and I just forgot that I did it again. This is where things like kind of get serious. You're supposed to be like. Oh, there's like blood showing. This is things are about to go down. Um, but it's really not communicated well. It's it's slow, like I said. The music swells up in the right spot though. I like how that I didn't edit the music at all. At least this piece. I edited a little bit of the other ones, but this kinda turned out perfect. <laughs> or at least as good as it could be. Um by coincidence. Uh, the way I had my jaw in that, I don't know, it, it might just be me trying to make myself look better, but I think it looks like a, a lot like that one shot from, I think it was Evil Dead 2 with Ash and he has like blood all over him. I don't know. Oh, this this whole thing was heavily inspired by Evil Dead and uh, Child's Play and um, Alien. Those are some of my favorite movies and uh, yeah, <laughs> I I sit here twice. I was supposed to be like like when I, like I'm really tired and I just have to sit down, but I sit in the same spot twice. It's just like that rising shot. I just didn't realize that I did it multiple times, so it seems really obvious that I'm like, ugh. <laughs> oh, that was another thing that I broke. I improvised that too with the blood because I broke off. I snapped off that head of that dog hawk. Action figure that I've had since I was a kid. Um, all the, like, uh, grabby things. I don't remember what they're called, but they're all broken anyway, so. I might get a new one, I might not, but. I like that I had some sort of production value with actual broken toys. Um, that poster broke, and the lights around my bookshelf just broke, like, yesterday. Like, they're all turned off, I can't plug them back in. The hook thing on my poster broke off. Like, I didn't realize it did this much damage. <laughs> but none of the important stuff was broken, luckily. I hope you could hear the... It's supposed to be like a sliding door downstairs that I'm hearing. I hope you heard that. I hope I had it loud enough without being too, like... It's supposed to be like... Because the sliding door is directly under my room. This is This is my favorite scene because... I really like that shot, because it looks so like, it doesn't look like it's a puppet. 
And it isn't a, it's, I don't know, it's not technically a puppet, I, I'll show behind the scenes uh, pictures after, but it's a plastic skeleton that I glued black fur onto, and I did like the eye, and the, I embedded the pupil to make it look like it was always watching you. So I did a lot of shots like directly, like right up close to its face to make it look like it was looking at the camera everywhere it went. I thought that was a cool thing. The, the alien is the best part of this movie. It's the reason it's not a 1 out of 10 on Letterboxd for me. <laughs> I mean a half out of 10. The practical effects are the best part of this movie. Like I, 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 there's, I don't see how you could think it's any other, any other thing is better. I, I don't know how to phrase this, but yeah, the alien and the blood. I, I, that's the, that's the thing I did best on this. I really like that shot. It looks so perfectly creepy. Oh man. And, uh, this shot, look at the, you can see blood dripping down off the side of its head. Cause I, uh, dumped a ton of blood on the gash in the side of its head, inside of its skull, on the swollen, on the side with the swollen eye. Um, and I ran out of the room, that's why the door's open, or the light's on. Um, yeah. This is another, like, nice quiet moment, but I'd rather not have the ear ringing thing, but I couldn't think of any other way to communicate that. It was kind of like, like, squeezing my, like, mind. Because the alien is a telepath. Oh, I try to communicate as best as possible. Watch the people. It's watching the camera. I love that. This one took so long. Because I couldn't make it, I couldn't make it look like it was actual, because like the shoulder would hit the floor and it'd like wobble, like it's an actual like puppet thing. That one took so long, I had to wipe up the blood every time. The blood was, it got messy that day with the alien. <laughs> but I finally, it took like ugh, 10 tries maybe. Probably long, probably more to get it look like that alien was actually falling, like it's a living thing. Because with the puppet, the shoulder, I sit here again. Of course, I sit here again. This is the this is the song, by the way, that gave me a copyright strike. This is the one song. This is the last song I put in. Because I just couldn't think of anything else. I wanted a nice, slow song. This was improvised. Having them all, like, all bloodied. The alien, then the minifigure me, and then me. It's supposed to be, like... Go from the source of the evil to the the way the evil and me met with the toys, and then to me, both the toys and the evil alien are dead, and it's just me left. Like the toys are gone from me, from my life. That's <laughs> maybe I'm. <sighs> I feel like I'm just making excuses to make this seem better. Um, the lighting screwed up here again. Um. Yeah. Everything after the final attack was filmed in order, because I had to keep my room like this. I moved the chair and the blanket, everything else I had to keep there, and I had to stop my cat from stepping on my stuff and my dog from screwing up the whole thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. I've wanted to use this song in my videos for a while. I was lo well, uh, I looked at songs earlier in like April maybe, and this was one of the songs that I found right off off of ccmixer.org. Um, and it was a good like montage song. So this is one of the first songs that I found that I really wanted to use. Um, yeah, that shot was hard to do. Um. Yeah. I don't know what to say here. <laughs> Hope you notice that my uh, outfit changes halfway through the scene, like I like I cleaned up myself too. You can notice there, my VT go home shirt. Sure, I thought that'd be a funny thing, cause like Alien in Vermont. 
Hopefully you can read it. I don't know if you can. Yeah, there's a phone in there. It's one of the last things I shot, and I'm using uh, an extra phone that I have. You can kind of read my shirt. Um, it says VT Phone Home, like ET. Um, yeah. I think clean... Cleaning up was the second to last thing I filmed. And then conclusion was the... I have I have names for all these scenes. The scenes with the aliens and I mean uh, the toys in my room while I'm in the basement was just called insert shots because it was originally just gonna be shots that I cut into and I just never changed the uh, name of the scene. I really like this song. I think this is a good um, credit song, even though I, I I was looking for a song that had like lyrics that were related to what was going on in the movie, but I just couldn't find anything. Um. But it sounds nice. If you read these, I actually wrote out, like, inspired by actual, the way they actually write these, uh, newspapers. Like, the format of their writing. Basically, ah, uh, um, the story is that a guy finds the alien in the trash and, like, gets a spotlight in the news, and then, I like the way that faded in. Um, and then I say, like, no, 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 I found it first, because he's claiming, like, the first alien ever found. And I say, no, 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 I found it. And then it's revealed that the Janus 2, the spaceship, was actually a training exercise, <laughs> of course. And the alien is just a testing dummy, and it gets confiscated. And then years later, I think I break, I think it cuts back to me, like, still hunting down, um, these living toys, because, uh, I guess more aliens landed on earth again it sounds a lot it sounds very dumb when i say it like that but basically i uh i think the last one is i get caught or maybe i don't but i'm still hunting down the toys in 2023 uh three years later um that's where we leave me i like the way i timed this um yeah this was one of the first things that i put into this movie was the ending because this this movie is supposed to be like a final segue into a new stage of my life because this is the last summer that I had where I this was the summer that I turned 16 and like now I have to get a job and things are going to start changing this was supposed to be like the final segue from the way things used to be and the way things are now um yeah, and that's it. Um, yeah, hopefully you understand the movie a little better now. Um, <laughs> I hope I clarified some some things. Um, yeah, <laughs> the the movie is also on Letterbox and IMDb. If you have accounts on either of those, um, please review. <laughs> and be harsh if you do like I gave it a 2 uh, like a 2 out of 10 a 1 out of 5 I mean uh yeah like be harsh like I, I can't learn if you aren't brutally honest with me so please review and tear me apart <laughs> so I can get better um new video soon I am planning on Hopefully doing these little commentaries with uh, more serious projects like like that playlist I have on my channel uh, Projects put more effort into or take seriously. I didn't take this one seriously. I just put effort into it, but with projects I do take seriously and it's, it's, it's serious projects that playlist Everything in there. I want to try and do a commentary for if it allows for a commentary with its length the one serious project I have planned right now that I'm definitely going to do is 15 seconds, so I won't do it for that, but others, hopefully in the future, I'll be able to um, do commentary for. I don't know if the behind-the-scenes photos will be done by now, but if they aren't, I'll just continue until I've shown them all. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, 
this is probably going to be the last uh, Attack of Living Toys or alt for short um, video that I put on this channel for a long time because I've kind of really drained that idea. Like, this is now like the sixth or seventh video on it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do any more of those. I'm going to try and do something different. Um, maybe more quickies or... I don't know, we'll just see where things go. I'm trying to make the channel something that I enjoy working on, doing the things I want to do. Like, the key to success on YouTube is... I've done it before with Sheet Mode 34. Like, I know how to play YouTube, but I'm with this channel, I'm choosing to just do what I want to do when I want to do it. And right now, that includes movie reviews as well as these shorts and animation sometimes. So, uh, yeah. I don't know where, it, I don't, I think, I think I've said it all. Um, yeah, that's, that's it for the commentary. Um, enjoy the behind the scenes photos and, uh, yeah, bye.